Now, we want to transition to one of our uh, one of our all-stars this season. Actually, one of the players who showed probably the most growth. Well, we talked about a lot of growth from Mark Williams, by the way. But Wendell Moore, a fantastic season. I mean, this is a guy that has come up clutch uh, multiple times. Lest we forget the UNC game last year when he oh, won, yeah. it, won it yeah, at the buzzer. The, the tip, won, yeah. The tip. He had a huge shot against BC to give coach, interim coach John Shire uh, a win in that one, a narrow escape. But uh, just going from freshman year to now, his field goal percentage has increased from 41% to 50%. He started every single game this season, averaging 34 minutes per game, and his three-point shooting and his points per game have been tremendous. And as a freshman, he was three-point shooting with 21%, 30% as a sophomore, 41% as a junior, 7.5 points per game as a freshman, 9.7 as a sophomore, and now 13.4 points per game as a junior. I mean, the growth, this is what you love to see as far as the development of a player who stays in in the Duke, you know, in the Duke system, stays in school for for three years. Uh, one of our most consistent players. What are we thinking here for Wendell Moore, who, from what I've read, is actually being considered by NBA scouts as a point guard. That's actually really interesting. <clears throat> I think you know he he has a good size. I mean, even you know at the collegiate level, he was he brought the ball up the court up the court a lot, and you know gave him that size advantage. Um, you know, once we got more true point guards, they kind of filled that role, I think, more as the season progressed. But, you know, if, if it was a fast break and, you know, he was the one that got the rebound or the outlet pass, I mean, he was more than happy to, like, take it down the floor and start the offense. Developed so strongly and just a, a clear reason of why sometimes it's a really good idea to come back for at least that junior season. The place he's going to be in now and the way he's being considered now is so different than he would have been a year ago. Uh, Plus he got all the experiences along the way too. Yeah. No, he, uh, growth aside, like such a fun player to watch. He, He could, he could impact the game anywhere on the court. Did not matter whether he was off the ball, on the ball, whether he was the primary ball defender, I think that's something that people don't don't talk too much about. Like he was exceptional defending, especially uh, along the perimeter. I was looking for stats to try to get uh, like opponent field goal per- field goal percentage when oh, he was yeah. the primary defender, and I just couldn't find any. But I know that was a major talking point throughout the season. So again, that's something that he was absolutely exceptional with. And when I was looking at his stats, you know, he ended with averaging four assists a game. Like that's actually pretty darn good for technic technically not our primary ball handler, technically, right? Um, so it makes sense. You know, he's got the size. Why not give him a look, you know, in the NBA as a potential point guard? You know, you never know what what might come of that. He's ranked 30th on CBS's big board. I mean, I right at the edge. Right, right at right at the edge of the first round. (laughs) Uh, again, depends on, you know, who trades, who does what, who's got what needs. But, yeah, he's done literally everything he possibly could to improve his draft stock and become a better player. And there was an uh, unnamed GM that basically said as they were making, you know, people were thinking about their decisions. They were like, yeah, he's done everything he needs to do to show he can play in the NBA. Like, he doesn't need to go back to school. He needs to come to the NBA. So yeah. he, he did what he needed to do. And good for him. Looking forward to seeing what he does in the next level. Yeah, I also want to add um, another thing that was big difference about him coming back this year too is he got to participate, you know, in the first year of when guys had the NIL deals too. So mm-hmm. he was getting, you know, that stuff and and you know for the the Duke program and the way they were marketing their players. I mean, he was one of the top guys, other than maybe like you know Bancaro, that were getting you know deals and mm-hmm. you know FaceTime advertising, you know, whatever headphones and putting on ads and sponsored by Bojangles and yeah, Bojangles. You know, <laughs> his NBA team talent is great. It's even better when it's like a you know a good looking marketable dude is also one of your best players too because like I mean they're still selling tickets, you know. So. Yeah, so, I mean, one of our most consistent players, I mean, he scored 20 against Gonzaga, even 17 in the loss to OSU. I just thought, like, game in, game out, you knew what you were going to get from Wendell. Like, and it just never really seemed like he had an off night. Like, he just, he showed up every game to play. He was a captain this season. I mean, he showed it. Fantastic. I, there's just, 
you know, maybe not sort of like, you know, the high flying profile of, of Bancaro, but just a, a rock upon which this team was really built and just tremendous. So thank you, Wendell Moore. Mm-hmm. It's the consistency this season uh, it was a huge part of, of making even the run. All right. Keel mode. <laughs> keel <laughs> mode was in full keel mode early in the first game against Kentucky. Started the season 25 points, and you had a lovely picture that you know has been now made famous here with with Trevor Keels <laughs> and the Kentucky folks there. Uh, it ACC All Freshman selection, really a, a catalyst for Duke. Justin, you mentioned when we were talking about Jeremy Roach that Keels was actually kind of driving the ship for a while yeah. as one of the primary ball handlers. I scored in double figures, 19 games, and Duke was 18-1 and one in those games uh, when he did. Seven assists against Gonzaga, nine against assists against NC State, a four assists and a few others who so sort of always in the mix and then became kind of this super six man, mm-hmm. uh, so to speak, right? But kind of had an up-and-down tournament, you know, yeah. 19 against UNC, nine versus Arkansas, not really the best. Didn't actually score against Texas Tech. Nothing. 0 for yeah. 3. No surprising. Uh, 12 against Michigan State, six against Fullerton. I don't know where where does this kind of you know, where does this kind of leave us? He ends the season 42 percent from the field, 31 percent from three. Impactful in games. Where does this leave us for the next level? This is one of those where we're just like, okay, he's right up, kind of on the cusp, like. He's rated right now as a, as the 43rd on the big board. So second squarely in the second round. So is that high enough that he's okay with, or can he increase his stock over the next couple, you know, next couple of weeks? I don't really know. This is going to be a really tough call. I remember, you know, when we were first talking about him as a recruit coming into the season, I mean, that was one of the things that we, we I think jumped off to us right away. It was just like, all right, oh my God, this dude's 6'4", 220. And it's not like a weird, you know, out of shape, dude, like this is, this is muscle. And that, you know, we, we've used the word bully before. I mean, that's just a bully job right in the middle, just threw right over the top and got fouled. And Ty Ty Washington was the one that hit the deck. Heels didn't even move. But I mean, yeah, he, he could just drive and, you know, all that little contact that kind of goes on the way guys just, they couldn't push him. So his line to the basket just stayed the same. And when he went up and guys, you know, bumped him into like legal bumping, he just, it didn't affect his shot. That's why he was able to finish and get to the bucket. And I know the stuff that would throw Roach off a little bit did not impact Keels at all. And when he needed to, to get a bucket, he could just go and get it. Um, and I think that being already that size, that strength, that physicality, you know, that does, that's why he's in that question to be, I mean, it's good at I me. Mean, when he finds out where he's going to be rejected at, you know, I think it almost kind of kind of gets into like, okay, what's your like potential earning situation, right? Mm-hmm. Like where are you going to judge that first year versus, you know, certain draft spots higher sets you off on your potential future NBA tra- trajectory. Right. And they'll, you know, and that sets your pay scale kind of the rest mm-hmm. of the way and potential negotiating and all that stuff like that. Like that's why it's such a big deal to get the first round versus the second round because of the way that NBA scales their rookies and stuff. Um, so, I mean, and with the NIL stuff, it's reasonable yeah, that yeah. if you're, if you don't get drafted in the first two rounds, but maybe still get signed after the fact, and they're like, okay, here's league rookie, you know, non lottery pick or, 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 you know, non drafty pay scale. And you're like, okay, but I could also go get six figs in NIL. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe worth more. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's worth going back a year and then you vault yourself into the first mm-hmm. round. Um, you know, from, I mean, you think about it like a business investment standpoint, you know? Yeah. When I was kind of looking at his numbers and I was thinking back to the games where Keels was great. And then the games where Keels like really didn't show as much it, it ended up coming down, I think to three point shooting. So he's 31% on the season mm-hmm. for someone who probably projects to a two guard or someone who's going to potentially be more on the wing versus a primary ball handler at the next level. I think he's going to have to bump that up a little bit more um, to really bump him up to the first round. So I'm fi- I'm fingers crossed that he comes back. 